The Flower MI trial randomized one to one 1,200 patients with an ST segment elevation myocardial infarction and multivessel non culprit coronary artery disease to staged FFR guided or angiography guided revascularization. The primary outcome endpoint of this trial was the combination of death MI or urgent revascularization at one year. This endpoint occurred in 5.5% of patients in the FFR group and in 4.2% of patients in the angiography group. Non-fatal and urgent revascularization didn't differ. I mean, none of the uh, endpoints looked at or sub-endpoints looked at differed. Um, the one difference to note, though, was that the mean number of stents was um, almost expectedly lower in the FFR group. It was just one, whereas in the angiography group, it was 1.5. Um, and that relates to the number of, of interventions being done being significantly higher in the angiography group at the end than in the FFR group, which though, again, is not surprising or was expected. Uh, but the bottom line is no difference between an FFR or an angiography-guided approach to multivessel coronary artery disease management of patients with an ST-segment myocardial infarction presenting without cardiogenic shock. It's a very um, important study in the sense that um, we've had other trials now since 2004. We've been looking at this very question, what's the added benefit of performing PCI um, in patients presenting with an ST-segment elevation myocardial infarction, having a clearly defined culprit lesion that we need to treat? And um, there was... a fairly recent meta-analysis on this very topic and um, concluding that there is a benefit of performing PCI and most of the time it's in a stage fashion. So not at the time of the initial primary PCI, but later on, often with a delay of two days, um, but before discharge of the patient. And that this kind of complete revascularization approach translate into a reduction of MIs in um, the follow-up period, uh, but also a reduction of cardiovascular mortality, at least in the meta-analysis. So what we had known prior to this uh, trial was that non culprit PCI in patients presenting with a STEMI um, is beneficial. There's an incentive to do so. But what we didn't know was, uh, should it be FFR-guided or angiography-guided? Um, trials that were done previously used either strategy, but there was no direct comparison. Now, this trial uh, indicates that there's really no difference. You can choose either. Um, and as far as angiography being easier, it doesn't add any additional cost or instrumentation. Um, I think this is what most people would go by. Um, and But it leaves room for discussion. The um, discussion that um, emerged after this, this trial was presented um, in, in, in one part has to deal with the, with the larger confidence intervals that were seen. Um, the investigators uh, argued that it's not really conclusive. Um, now, as a trialist, that's some, <laughs> it's a statement you never really want to make, that you did a trial that it wasn't conclusive at the end. Um, others feel like, I mean, it's, it's, really, um, it's really pretty clear, but what is definitely clear is that the event rates were much lower than uh, anticipated. And so uh, the trial, if you were really uh, wanted to do this comparison, you would actually need 8,000 patients, not 1,200, but 8,000 patients um, based on the events rate that they had. And that's obviously not gonna, not gonna happen. Now, conceptually, um, I personally like FFR, and I think there's a whole lot of merit to it, um, that you go by the hemodynamic relevance and just the angiographic appearance. But it does add to the, to the cost of the procedure. The other element is um, we've debated how valuable is FFR, or how useful is it in the setting of an acute myocardial infarction, um, because the, the microcirculation can be perturbed, 
um, for various reasons in that setting. And it's very critical that you are able to uh, almost completely zero the microvascular resistance for any FFR measurement. So otherwise you end up with false numbers. Um, so that's a little bit of a grain of salt um, utilizing FFR, um, these kind of measurements that rely on the integrity of the microcirculation when you're dealing with a patient population that might not uh, fulfill that, that requirement. But this being said, um, it's generally felt that FFR can be pursued. And as I mentioned before, studies have used FFR in the non-culprit vessel uh, to, guide, to guide intervention. Um, would it change practice right now? I think um, from what this trial is, 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 is um, messaging is that angiography alone is, is good enough. And I think most of us will, will just take it uh, for the time being as such. Thank you.